Okay. Thank you, everyone. Like I will start to introduce the Zion Modular System Architecture Overview. Um, again, like uh, by how Michael and Tyler from Meta. So first, I want to go through the Meta Open Fleet. As you may know, like Facebook slash Meta used to be a was always a very a strong supporter for the OCP. So generally speaking, I listed all the hardware fleet, the whole fleet, like we contributed to the OCP. We treated it as a very important tenant for the Meta's uh, hardware development uh, concept. And uh, being open, contributed to OCP is always the thing we are supporting. So talking a little bit of the um, Zion, before that I want to introduce a high level on AI in Meta. Basically, AI is used extensively in Meta Fleet, right? We have the ranking, content understanding, pattern detection, speech recognition, and the translations. So all those kind of uh, powerful AI models, as we discussed in the previous panel discussion, need powerful hardware. That's a problem statement. Zion is designed to support AI workload. Uh, first, I want to check like uh, any people here like attended the OCP summit in 2019. A uh, few of them. Maybe you still remember, like uh, it's in the 2019 OCP summit, we first introduced our Zion system. At that time, we are, we are proposing a modular server design, which has an A socket CPU servers plus an uh, eight accelerator platform. That's back to 2019. A lot of things has changed. Today, I will introduce the new uh, Zion definition, which is the, up to the latest one. First, we keep the two-socket modular server architecture here, but it's not an A-socket anymore. It's a two-socket or four-socket host. We still have the eight accelerator shelf, uh, which contains the OEM modules. In addition, we added the uh, expander box in between that support additional OCP NICs and the storage modules for the storage offload and the scale out. With that, you can see like we have uh, updated the configuration of the system, which is contain those three subsystems, right? In the end, the overall Zion system will contain three subsystem boxes, and I will give you introduction on all those kind of three subsystems here. If you look at the uh, a superset of the settings, uh, you will have the, which is the most complicated one, we call it a Zion EX, right? You have the, Two socket, four socket servers we call the Andrews landing, and in in the in between there is an expander box uh, which we call it the Clear Creek. Right in the expander box you will see we add the um, we add the OCP NICs and the storages. This uh, the purpose for this expander box is mainly for the scale out, and we keep the Emerald pools uh, to support the OEM. So the whole system was connected together uh, through the PCIe links, and we will give more introduction about uh, how we uh, manage those kind of connections in between those uh, subsystems together in the later slides. Okay, talk a little bit on the Andrews landing. Um, this one like uh, support up to four socket Intel Cooper Lake CPUs, and in a four socket configurations, uh, the Andrews landing can support up to four 100G OCP 3.0 NICs. The o overall, like this the motherboard is, uh, can support a lot of DIMMs, uh, up to 1.5 terabyte DDR4 DIMMs, and uh, we have the fully connected UPI interconnection in between all those, uh, in, uh, in between all those uh, four CPUs through the backplane. All right, Clear Creek is a very, very important element we added in the Zion system based on our 2019 proposals. In this one, we have, uh, have uh, four PCIe Gen 4 switches in between. Uh, it can support eight 200G NICs, mainly for the scale out purpose, and a 16 E1.S slash M.2 SSDs. So we can support that by swapping the, um, swapping the storage trays, like we have the E1.S tray and M.2 trays. Um, so that is interswappable. Uh, with that, like uh, you can see, for the each OAM, uh, it will be connected to all those kind of extra SSDs and the NICs under the same switch so that we can use this one 
to build a scale-out capability, which is very important for the Zion system to handle the large work model uh, to, to, to aggregate all those kind of accelerators to build a cluster. Emerald Pools is the accelerator box. And I think it's a, a, by that time, like it's a very important and a big announcement, like we introduced the OEM form factor. So in the Emerald Pool systems, we can support eight OEMs, and each OEM has interconnections to support high-speed communication in between the accelerators. So this one, we still keep it the same. So within all those three uh, subsystem box, right, uh, we build those kind of uh, modular concept in the Zion EX system. Uh, with that, I will hand over to Michael, so he will explain to, to you like uh, how we handle the system level configuration uh, based on this concept. Michael. Thank you, Hal. Hello. Hi, I'm Michael Hagen. I'm a mechanical engineer at Meta. And on the next slide, we're going to look at uh, two factors or two objectives that motivated a lot of the design decisions around Zion. First, we're going to look at flexibility, which is given to us through modularity. So here we see, starting in the bottom right picture, we could combine our Angel's Landing system directly to the Emerald Pool system. Uh, so we have a two socket or four socket head node directly attached to the OAM, uh, eight OAM box Emerald Pools. And this is good for like a scale up uh, for some, some AI workloads. But if you want to take it one step further, we can add this expander box in the middle, Clear Creek, which Howe just highlighted. And that'll enable us to pool up GPU resources in a much uh, larger pool of, of shared resources to tackle uh, larger problems. And I want to highlight here that um, in all of these configurations, the uh, Emerald Pools and Angel's Landing's uh, subsystems are the same. So that allows us to, to leverage those uh, design. Next, let's look at serviceability. And if we're going to talk about serviceability in machine learning, we've got to start with cables. So first, I, I want to highlight here, there's uh, three separate types of cables in the Zion EX system. First, we have the large PCIe cables that link up uh, the three subsystems together uh, and treat, you know, uh, enable them to be a single operating uh, system together. Um, those are the large uh, black rectangles on the sides of the systems that you can see there. Second, we have our backend network. These are the eight RDMA uh, NIC located in the expander box, eight by 200 gig. And uh, third, we have the front end network, so the four by uh, 100 gigabit um, in the CPU host. Now, uh, anytime you have to service, traditionally, uh, anytime you service modules, you have to take out cabling in order to get to all the frues, uh, the potentially failed items, um, to, to swap them out. And this can be uh, a pretty big um, difficulty. So what we've done in the uh, Zion EX system is locate all these cables uh, on the edges of the system. First, you'll notice the PCIe cabling, um, the large black, rec uh, black rectangles there, are on the sides of the system. And they actually connect from the front and run down uh, internal cabling that uh, travels along the sides of these motherboards and then connects to the back of each of these boards uh, and connects blind with a blind mate interface. And that enables us to put all of our higher failure rate items on front accessible trays um, that you can see there behind all of those green bars uh, that, that basically allow you to get to all of those uh, field replaceable units. So things like CPUs, DIMMs, storage devices, um, the open accelerator modules, all of these items can be serviced uh, without removing uh, the cabling for, for the most part. Um, I'll also highlight here that the OEMs themselves are accessible and serviceable uh, from a extending slide rail that comes out of the front of the Emerald Pool system and can be serviced in the extended position. And uh, with that, I'm going to hand it back over to uh, Tyler Hart to talk about some of the manageability um, from a software side. Hey, everyone. Uh, I'm Tyler from uh, the release production team at Meta. And um, forgive some of my acronyms. I Hopefully, they're starting to stick here. So AL is Angels Landing. Uh, CC is Clear Creek. And uh, EP is Emerald Pools. I neglected to add a legend here. But um, if it helps, Zion's the national park. And these are all locations within Zion. Um, so as, as Howe and Michael have highlighted, uh, Zion's built and designed as a modular system. And one of the challenges we had to tackle in our production data center is how we kind of uh, bring all these modules or, or chassis together as one cohesive system. And uh, each of these modules or chassis has their own independent BMC or baseboard management controller. And Angel's Landing Zero um, 
acts as the sort of primary BMC and connects to the secondary BMCs over I square C. But we also have uh, this USB connection that we, we didn't really originally design for this, but we sort of commandeered that interface to do an Ethernet over a USB bridge, uh, which allows us to give uh, a MAC address, an IP address, to uh, the downstream Emerald Pools and Clear Creek uh, BMCs, exposing those BMCs uh, to our Tor and our tooling, uh, just like we would any other platform. And that kind of helps Zion to become plug and play in our, in our data center environment. Um, one of the um, examples that sort of shows how we use these interconnects is uh, when Zion has to do a crash lock. Um, so in this specific example, let's say a, a CATR MSMI pin uh, was triggered, um, CPU has halted and, and the system's hung. Uh, at that point, we would create a cell log in Angel's landing, a system event log in, in, in the BMC. And this would trigger a, a crash log collection on the, the primary BMC. This is just a scripter process that runs and starts to collect um, different machine check banks from the CPU over PECI. It collects sensors um, from, from the different uh, components and, and BMCs, uh, including the GPUs and NICs, and also uh, the firmware versions, all, all things that help us sort of uh, debug uh, this kind of issue and, and start to diagnose and create a ticket for, um, for our repair teams. And uh, this, this crash log is then saved to the, the BMC flash, and we have a, an external service that comes in periodically uh, to extract and upload this crash log to a, a database. And this all helps with us to do uh, crash log analysis, uh, sort of to scale it out, to find systematic problems, um, but it also helps us to, to see uh, any kind of historical um, uh, information we need if, if there's a repeat offender uh, in the Zion platform. So this is just one of the many examples that uses this BMC um, sort of topology and interconnect uh, to, to make Zion a, a, a single cohesive system. Um, with that, that's uh, our presentation. Um, thanks for coming to see Meta's update on the Zion platform. Lots of changes since uh, 2019. Um, we're happy to, to announce that we're, we're shipping these into production um, to, to, to serve all our different AI and ML workloads as, as how introduced. And we'll be contributing the Zion specification to the OCP ecosystem uh, in the coming weeks uh, with the help of Quanta uh, QCI. Thank you.